This is lesson 1.5, use a problem solving plan. And this is really about word problems. What is your strategy to solve word problems? And I will tell you, word problems are not scary. And I will have won a big battle if that you stop being scared of word problems, if you're if you are scared in the first place. Some of you love them, some of you find them really fun puzzles. I didn't, I didn't used to, but after a while now, goodness, it's like digging into a great jigsaw puzzle. So the key, and I will underline step one a hundred times, the key to solving a word problem is read and understand. If you can read and understand a word problem, you will get through it. To read and understand it, you have to picture it. How are you gonna get that long paragraph of words into something that you can picture, right? You've got to picture, draw it. And I don't mean just picture it just in your head. I actually mean draw it. Sometimes the book gives you drawings, but if it doesn't, you draw it. Identify what you know. You'll find folks who grew up in my generation, what are the knowns? What things do you know? What have you been given? Yeah, the book is not gonna try to trick you. Real life is, is a lot harder <coughs> because in real life, problems are not solved yet. You are the first one solving it. There's no teacher pulling the answer out of the drawer saying you got it right. But in this book, there actually is. And that's reassuring because what that means is in this problem, they have given you what you need to solve the problem. So identify what you know. Take your time doing that. Second, identify what you want to find out. In other words, what you don't know, right? What you want to find out. And that means, honestly, what you want to find out is really what the book is saying, what they want you to find out right? Step two, once you've really understood it, so take your time on step one, make a plan. What does a plan look like? It basically comes down to an equation or an inequality. That represents the reality of that paragraph. And we just did that, right? Um, we've done, done that several times already. Step three. If you've gotten to step one and two, step three and four go very fast. Carry out your plan. In other words, if you haven't made an equation, solve it. That's all that that means. Solve it. And if you've done it right, when you get to step four, the book calls that look back what that just means is, does your answer make sense? In other words, if you were asked to find out Jimmy's height, right? And you thought you understood it, you made your plan. Maybe you didn't draw a picture for this one, I don't know. You made your equation, you carried it out, you solved it. Jimmy is 27 feet tall. Does your answer make sense? No, it does not make sense. So you have to go back and say, hmm, I must have missed something. I need to go back. Um, so you need to start with reading and understanding. Biggest step. I'm going to put a giant star by that. All right. We're going to go through these steps. Um, the problem um, examples one and two, um, which are really just continuations of each other. So I'm just going to call them one and two right here because they're the same thing. All right, so let me read you the little paragraph that we're going to try to read and understand. Um, you run in a city where the short blocks on north-south streets, let me just draw really quickly, north, south, east, west, and I'm going to draw what they have. Unfortunately, they're very, they were very nice about it. They actually drew it for you. Here's a block. 
I'm going to draw the block inside. This will be like a building, right? <clears throat> so again, I am doing step one. I'm drawing a picture of the problem as I'm reading it. I often literally take notes as I read. You do not have to do it that way, but I find it helps a lot. Oh, this is meant to be north up here, by the way. I kind of went off the paper, but... <coughs> okay, you run in a city where the short blocks are 0.1 mile long. The long blocks on east-west are 0.15 mile long. You will run two long blocks east. Okay, I'm writing down my notes. These are my given. Two, I'm running two long blocks east. Right? This is given. This is what the book has told me. This is information they're telling me. So I'm identifying it, right? They then tell me after that, a number of short blocks south. So number N, short blocks south. And then two long blocks west. And then back to my starting point. All right, so this is where step one, I am, this is all in step one. I'm taking my time on step one. Because if I don't understand it, I cannot model it. I can't make a plan. All right, so I'm starting. I'm going two long blocks east. One long block, two long blocks. 0.15, 0 0.15. N short block south. Well, each of those is 0.1, but I don't know how many N blocks. This is what they're not telling me. <clears throat> then two long blocks west. 0 0.15, 0 0.15. And then it says back to my starting point. So I've written down what they gave me. I've done a drawing of it, right? This is back to my starting point. I can picture it now. I'm running. I don't know how many I'm going south, but I know they're point one each. I'm running these two long blocks this way. And however many short blocks I ran down, I'm going to go back up north to my starting point. Got it. I can picture this now. Number one, that's my step one. I've pictured it. I've identified what I know. What am I missing? I haven't quite gotten to what do they want to know? Well, they want to know how many short blocks should you should you run? Ah, so they want to know this, right? Well, not just this one, but presumably you're doing some short blocks this way and some that way, right? So how many short blocks should you run? Oh, there's one more fact I need to include if I'm to solve this problem. Some of you have already thought that. You're probably way ahead of me. Total of this whole circuit, I'm trying to run two miles. So I need to equal two miles. Okay, so this was my step one. I understand it. I have a picture. I know my total. Next, based on that, I'm gonna make my plan. All right. To make my plan, so that's gonna be my, that was my step one. I'm gonna make my step two. Make a plan. That's my equation. Well, with an equation, first of all, right, I'm trying to get to two miles. Equals two. Great starting point, right? What do I know? Well, I know that I'm running how many long blocks? Let me go back to my drawing. One, two, three, four. So I'm running four long blocks, and my long blocks are 0.15. Right? So these are my long blocks. Okay. 
I'm running, I don't know how many short blocks I called it in, right? But I do know how long they are. And that's my short blocks. This is miles. This is their length, right? Um, and this is the number, number short blocks. And this is my number long blocks. Because I know four long blocks times, and each of them is 0.15 miles, is going to give me a certain number of miles, right? <clears throat> Does that make sense for me to find? I have written everything down to solve for n, the number of short blocks and their length, right? Plus the number of long blocks and their lengths. If I multiply all that out, I'll get my total mileage. And that makes sense, right? 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, right? That's like two sides of a perimeter, right? And then I need to find out how many of those blocks, right? So that the four sides all together add up to two miles, okay? <clears throat> all right, so now I have an equation, 0.1n, and don't worry if it's a little different. I did it differently than the book but really the answer will be the same. In other words, I used N instead of S here. Point 0.4 times 0.15 is 0.6 equals two. Okay, now we did a little bit of mental math, right? I Some of you learned some algebra last year and I bet that using that algebra, you would know how to solve it, but you can use some mental math to solve it, right? Um, so let's, Let's try a number, right? What times n plus 0.6 is going to get me to 2 miles, right? How am I going to solve that? Well, I can try some numbers, right? Um, I can look at this and say something plus 0.6 is going to give me 2. Well, I can pretty much guess that whatever this is is going to equal 1.4, right? Because you know 1.4 plus 0.6 is 2. You can do this in your head. So 0.1n, 0.1 times some number is gonna give me 1.4. What is that number gonna be? What do I multiply by that's gonna give me 1.4? Well, 14 makes a lot of sense, right? 0.1 times 14, if you do it in on your calculator or just multiply it out, you know. So 14 is short blocks. You solve that, does that make sense? Yep, all you have to do is just put it back in here, right? If I do seven here and seven here, right? This would add up to 0 0.3, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, plus 0 0.3, right? And then if I have um, seven of these, plus 0 0.7, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7 is one, plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7 is another mile, so I get two miles. So it makes sense. So in this last part, so I didn't label this, but this was my step three. I solved it. And step four, I, I looked back, right? I looked back at my diagram and it made sense. All right, now the book looks back differently using a table. Feel free to look at that. I <clears throat> used my drawing because I felt like that was easier. It doesn't matter as long as you look back and you check and it makes sense, right? You could even do it manually and just sit there and say, I'm going to do my big drawing, right? 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and add it all up and see if it makes sense. All right. So that is example one and two. And I, I'm going to pause um, and start a new video with the end of uh, lesson, uh, lesson 1.5 in just a minute.